a sarcastic and cynical bastard usually, but I'm truly 100% invested in this thing. Everything's Gone Green is Douglas Copeland's first ever screenplay. Remember that this is the guy who gave us the term and the thinking about Generation X. And he writes about Vancouver very clearly. He sees a darker side here, even though it's beautiful and it's rainforest. He knows that everybody has a secret, some of them dark and well hidden. Anyway, this screenplay stars Paulo Costanza as Ryan, a 30-something who's just lost his job and his girlfriend. It also stars J.R. Bourne, and in her first ever feature film in North America, Steph Sung from Hong Kong. This is a very Vancouver-centric project. I mean, uh, Douglas Copeland, the writer, is... I sort of see it as his love letter to his city. I mean, he wrote a book called City of Glass, which was kind of the pictorial text version of that. And uh, he's a real sort of Vancouver booster, sort of. And uh, I think this film is kind of the equivalent of that book. Sorry. Did, oh, did I ruin your picture? No, oh, no, it's a digital camera. It hold like a thousand pictures in here. It's the first movie that I've ever heard of that not only is shot in Vancouver, but is placed in Vancouver. Yep. Other movies exist um, in that in that realm, but it's placed in Vancouver, but addresses issues in Vancouver, like tons of issues in Vancouver. That's unique. It's very unique. It's a very unique little movie. Hey, hey. It's a nice piece of real estate you got here. It is. Thanks. It's, it's not mine. I'm just kind of like the super for the building. Ah, so you're actually enjoying the benefits of another man's property. Come again? Let's step out here for a minute. A gentleman like Douglas Copeland, an individual like him, um, he is so clear with his vision and with what he wants to do, and if he's going to venture into that kind of a, you know, uh, I'm going to write a script, and he, he's going to do it when he is so sure of it. Sure. It, it, then uh, it, it's going to be good. Thanks, Sue. Everybody's gone through a period in their life where they just felt lost and didn't know where they were going. And uh, everything just kind of starts getting really surreal for him. And he, and, he, and he, through trial and error in the film, goes through all these kind of stages of figuring out who he is and where he's going. Are you a photographer? Me? No, I just, I just like to take pictures, you know. Are you? No, I'm a set dresser for the movies they shoot here in Vancouver. Oh. Cable access and movies of the week. The film that sort of I keep going back to as a benchmark for this is The Graduate. And uh, in it, sort of, they have similar themes of a young man trying to find his way and figure out who he is and define himself. And um, sort of similar to like young Dustin Hoffman, you know, he, he gets the gags, but he's also, you know, that's a real character there. And I think we, it was very important to find somebody who could embody both those. I mean, it's like one day you finally have a decent set of friends, and then suddenly they all get exec jobs, get married, have kids, and vanish, and, and your life is like that old science fiction movie. Charlton Heston. Um, no people. The Omega Man. Yeah, it's like everyone's moved on and left you behind, and you're totally alone in this big empty city. And it's this beautiful little screenplay that I read and just was like, wow, this is really, really amazing. And uh, everyone in the crew just loves it. Everyone here is really happy to be doing it because we all kind of believe in it. Got lost, maybe? Or confused? It looks so sad. Like it was part of a family and just sort of fell away. I was just telling my mom that, um, that I was just telling her that we're doing the whale scene because she's, um, she's read the script and she likes it because she takes an avid interest in what I do. A sarcastic and cynical bastard usually, but I'm truly a hundred percent invested in this thing. 
this scene is so so quite real, and then we're moving into the winter's thing where the where it starts to we start start to go into a bad transition to make yeah. Copeland and his voice is very well known as an author, and I think it was very important uh, to us as filmmakers to try and make sure we capture that voice and uh, and sort of come up with the filmic equivalent of what's of a Copeland world, and it hasn't been done before, so it was an interesting challenge to be the first to do that. Everybody, everybody.